I've been playing lacrosse for as long as I can remember. From first grade all the way until senior year, lacrosse has been everything to me. It has always been more than just a spring sport. It is something I would look forward to in the winter or play at the park in the summer. I decided to sit down with the parents who wanted to bring the sport they had grown to love to Scotch Plains Family and give them the opportunity to tell their story. What first inspired me to bring lacrosse to Scotch Plains and Fanwood was the fact that I had been around it my whole life. My older brothers um, had played it. I was involved in uh, that from when I was a little kid, like water boy. And then I played it in uh, when I was little, you know, youth, high school, and for a couple of years in college. So when we bought a house out in New Jersey and, and we didn't have uh, lacrosse as a youth program in town, uh, I got involved in Westfield's program um, to kind of scratch that itch. But I always wanted to, I always wanted to have it available for my kids. So that, that's kind of what inspired me. So I came here in '89, and I did know I didn't have any kids at the time, so I wasn't paying a whole lot of attention of what was going on in the youth programs in town or even the high school. But I did know that there was no lacrosse program, and I always thought that was weird because I grew up with a, a, in a school that had all sports for boys and girls. So I just thought it was weird. Like, how did they not have lacrosse? But you know, I go to find out there are other towns that also didn't have it. But I uh, so over time, just just you know, you start meeting guys in town, whether it's at a bar or through friends or whatever, and then one guy goes, oh, yeah, you played lacrosse? So did this guy. And, and I think it was uh, Pete Russell I met through a mutual friend. He goes, you guys got to get together. You played lacrosse. He was talking about starting a program, too, because I had mentioned, I'm like, man, I'd love to, you know, get, but I never, I wasn't that serious about it because I wouldn't even know, know the first thing about how to go about doing that. The next thing I know, I get a call. It might have been from Tim. So it, it, that was an interesting story. So when we decided to put this together, there was a gentleman uh, by the name of Sean Murphy who was involved in the soccer program uh, who also wanted to uh, start um, a lacrosse program in town. And he was well connected with a lot of people in town. So uh, when I reached out to him originally, he put me in touch with uh, other individuals in town that he knew were interested in, in starting the lacrosse program. So the spearhead of that was the St. Bart's uh, Italian Festival in September, or Labor Day weekend. At the St. Bart's Festival in town, we figured everybody in town went there uh, at least for one night. Um, so we decided to set up a fastest shot contest. On the uh, there's one little like uh, plot of grass when you pull into the back parking lot, and we built a uh, with a net. We borrowed a net and we built a tunnel, and we actually got. The, the a blow up lacrosse player from I think it was the Long Island Lizards at the time and we got a speed gun and for a dollar you got three shots and that's how we I think in that for the St. Bart's Festival um, we were there every night and with just charging a dollar I think we 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 made almost nine hundred dollars that like nine hundred kids or adults um, took three shots to see how fast they could shoot the ball. So that's how we kind of came in, came onto the scene. I think there were a couple uh, obstacles in the beginning uh, in that we, we needed to obviously organize and get enough people to volunteer uh, to, to get, get started. 
Um, we needed to raise some money, obviously, to get started. Um, and then one of the one of the bigger obstacles was definitely uh, fields, because like most uh, towns, uh, there's just not enough fields to go around. Um, we competed with soccer, which had you know a, a very big uh, membership. Um, so that was probably one of the toughest things is just finding the adequate field space to have our practices and games. Is that something you tried to force and tried to create, or is it something that just kind of came with the school? You know, I, I, I think I want to um, steal from the high school theme of family. You know, with lacrosse, um, there is a very strong, you know, because it is a, a new sport in town, and because everybody, you know, is almost compelled to do soccer in town. If you do lacrosse, you, you, you're a little bit different um, in a good way. No, it just it's not forced at all. It's just purely natural because um, we don't try to create it. It, it just creates itself. Um, and, you know, and, and it's gotten, you know, now the lacrosse is on TV so much more than it used to be. So now you just see it more but the same whether you're playing in the 70s or 80s or whenever it's it's really the same um mentality and and culture um it's it's not it's it's not forced at all it is totally natural which i think you know we've done a good job it's there um but we're still growing you know getting involved with our youth program or really getting the program off the uh ground just making it not really just a hobby, but a sport that kids took seriously, a sport that kids train with. And um, because it's not thousands of kids playing the sport, boys and girls, there is a little bit of a family feel to it. Uh, the high school players know the youth players, and there's lots of little brothers and little sisters involved. So I, I would think the theme is family. You know, we really preach it, family. Um, everything that we, you know, do it's definitely we before me um just growing the sport being excited you know uh having guys out there that even if you're not on the field you're excited for the team to win um you know i always say i want the sideline to explode every goal every big hit if you're on the field and a goal scored against you the six guys in the goalie bring it in and talk about it if there's a goal that scored for us those six guys will all celebrate to, uh, together on the field so i think we're just doing things together doing things the right way so, um, you know, when Coach Maselli came in, that family word came, you know, pretty quickly. Um, and, and I think we kind of adapted it and really bought into it as a coaching staff. And I think that that culture has really stuck with us um, throughout the time I've been here. So um, it's actually now pushed down into the youth program a lot, okay, where you're starting to see our youth players um, kind of doing that same thing and pushing that same kind of movement that we want at the high school level. Um, that bridge that we build with our with the youth program a long time ago has stayed strong and that's really helped us uh, become the program we are now and it's helped our kids grow a lot uh, because we're working hand in hand together with that youth program. program started actually uh, uh, almost earlier than, than the youth program was ready for it. We had a uh, athletic director at the time that was a proponent of the game, had played the game, and uh, you know came to us and, and wanted to get a high school program right off the bat. Um, I, David, I don't know exactly. I, I, I want to say that we've had the high school program for going on 10 years. We were only in existence as a youth program for a couple of years before the athletic director actually approaches, approached us. We were gonna go a little bit slower in our minds, but uh, maybe another year we felt we needed. Um, but it actually, you know, the first year of the, of the lacrosse program went off, even before we were ready for it, it, it really was a successful launch. Uh, I think it was a couple of things that motivated me. Um, Definitely, you know, seeing what my high school coaches, my high school phys ed teachers did, I kind of like saw what they had. And I was like, that's 
that's an awesome job. Um, the connections, you know, I still know those guys, still talk to those guys. And uh, for me, it was, you know, I played in college and after my last game, I felt like, you know, I wanted to keep doing something with the sport. And I was fortunate enough to coach at my college for one year. And then it kind of just took off from there. Um, I think I started coaching. I'm going to give you the whole thing. I started coaching in 2003 um, at Kane. And I was there for a year and a half, a full season, and then half the second season. And being at a college level was great because it's a little faster and quicker. Um, I was able to learn from the head coach there, who's still there now, Coach Shiner. And then I was able to go to Seton Hall Prep for two years with my college coach, which was one of the best experiences. Um, you know, you have that, 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 you have, you know, the writing on your chest that says family. That, that whole mentality I started getting at, in Seton Hall Prep. I left, I went after there for two years. We won a county championship. We were in the state finals, I think two years in a row. Um, I had an opportunity to go back to my middle school in Clark and I taught there for three years and then became here. I think being able to coach at the college level, then to one of the best high schools in the state, then down to middle school with sixth, seventh and eighth graders, and then back up to the high school here at Scotch Plains really helped me evolve knowing what kids need at the certain levels they are. Okay, so I was able to evolve as a coach because I saw the growth of how a kid was in middle school and how a kid all the way through college, what to expect from him. I would say my mom, my mom was a coach. My mom had a big influence on me playing sports and also my sisters and also uh, the other coaches that I've had. I realized that after I went to school for T, um, business I realized I didn't want to do that and I wanted to be a teacher and just make an impact on the kids and especially the girls and give them a sport that the, they would love just like the way I did. The first couple of years it was just trying to get guys out to play trying to get guys just to learn how to catch and throw the ball you know now we've taken to the in a, a next level where there's you know we've had 20 some alumni playing college we got kids playing throughout the year we got you know our numbers have blown up where my first year it was maybe 30 40 kids we had 70 something kids try out this year you know now we have a, a freshman team now so the program has definitely grown you know it's it's funny you know i obviously i remember that first year a lot um Coach Maselli makes fun of me a lot, too. It'll be fun to, to listen on tape. Because I've been here for 11 years, I don't remember a lot of times full grades. I'll remember a kid a grade, and then Maselli will go, this is who the grade was, because it's been 11 years. Um, first year I got here was a good group of seniors. Um, Coach, uh, Coach Hack, Tyler Hack's group, I think he was a sophomore when we came up, picked up a stick for the first time as a freshman. Um, you know, I think every year, there's special players that I'm, I remember and have a good relationship with that I remember more than actual grade level sometimes. Obviously, 2014, we, or with 14, we won the conference was a big year for us. I think your brother was here, okay? Um, you know, every year since, there's been players that I've always missed more than others, okay? And I think that's a really important part of what Scotch Plains and our coaching staff does. We make good relationships with our kids. They want to come back. They want to see us. They want to come watch games. They want to come back and see how the team's doing. So that relationship, if it wasn't here, I don't think I would be here anymore, okay? Because that's, for me, more important a lot of times, the relationship you build with your players than, than the end, than the, end the season results. I mean, I think a big thing for me was that knowing that I didn't start playing until I was a freshman and knowing that in order for Scotch Plains lacrosse to kind of continue to get on the map and be successful and win those big games and get to a state sectional final, you know, we need a lot of people to give back that have played the game. Um, and granted, I don't know much about it. I know just kind of that special niche face-off position. Um, and I just felt like it was kind of, you know, I had to do it. Like, you know, I wasn't really successful with it and Maselli and Robo and Jordan, they all took a chance on me and I became successful with it. So I feel like if I can give back and, and help Ethan like this past season or Bobby Roode, um, you know, and the younger guys like your brother and just help them and help them understand it and just get them a little bit of a head start. I think that'll just do, it'll do wonders for, for this program in the future. So I just figured why not? I mean, I'm here, you know, I, I like the game. I like to kind of help kids get better. I mean, that's, I wish I had that much when, uh, when I was playing. So I just figured if I know it, might as well come back and then help kids and help them be more better than I was. So, you know, those records are meant to be broken. I think David Walker holds a lot of the faceoff records now. So. 
um, if someone can beat him, that's great. You know, we just kind of want to keep that competition going. So I, I think that's a big reason why. I would really say the last last year was probably the strongest senior class I've had. Um, Amber Brett, Sabrina Delolo, and Kelly Mahard are all. Amber and Sabrina went. Amber and Kelly went to play in college, but Sabrina was one of our top goal scorers. And I just think that their work ethic and how hard they went to every practice and hustled really showed me like kind of what can happen here. But also, even watching Amber play in college showed me like she wants it so badly and is willing to do anything to make it happen and her and Sabrina all came back one day and helped me on the sidelines kind of with oh we do this in college we do that in college like maybe try this try that so I think having girls that are playing in college now and being able to connect kind of what they're doing and bring it back to the program is a huge thing but I think those three girls made a huge impact for us last year and those were the str three strongest girls that I've coached so far I would say. I think, you know, every team is definitely special. You know, 2012 was my first year as a uh, head coach. Uh, so I always remember those guys. 2013, we made it to the state semifinals. We did not belong there. We were not as skilled, but we were, you know, the hardest working group I've ever had. 2014 was a special group because we won our division championship. We won 10 or 11 straight games close with those guys. But I could really go through every single year and say, you know, how close I was or, or what happened that year that I would have done differently. I mean, you saw last week or two weeks ago, you know, I get emotional every single year when it's the last game. I always say it's the worst day of the year for me, you know. Um, so I think every single year, I was close with the, the year guys, 2019, 2018 was great. So I, I don't think it's one year. I think every year is important to me. And I get so vested in those guys that it's just, you know, it's tough for me when it's over. But I do look back to see what I could do differently after each year. Uh, Cole's Cup was started in 2014. Um, Cole was a sophomore on our 2013 team, was starting goalie, he was an all-state goalie, all-division goalie, and he was one of the main reasons we went on that deep playoff run. I think we were like 500 halfway through the season then we really turned it on and we went on a deep run in the playoffs we we won our first ever state game then we went on the road to play the number two team in our state group and we had no business beating them and we outworked them in every facet of the game and cole was huge um cole was set to go to a bunch of recruiting camps showcases to get looked at by college coaches and unfortunately he got diagnosed with cancer that summertime and i think you know we really r r rallied behind him and that saying of family was really manifested throughout that you know that that tragic news that we got from cole and he battled he battled cancer i remember going to see him in the hospital playing xbox with him in the hospital bed um he battled cancer all summer all fall came back to school in winter of his junior year and we wanted to honor him by having a rivalry game and you know we're close with the cranford coaches the cranford pro uh program it's a nice close rivalry so we started off the coles cup and i remember that first game was we were down uh nine seven with a minute left and we scored two goals to tie it and we won it in overtime and it was a great way to start the uh tradition um we not only had our Coles Cup here for the first year, which was amazing, we went um, and played at Old Bridge because Old Bridge had a kid with cancer and the entire stands were green. And I'm talking five, 6,000 people, okay? Um, to talk about a, a group of players and a town supporting a cause, I've never seen anything like it. Uh, so that, that cup and that game and Cole mean a lot to us because that's so there's a tradition that I didn't bring up that is going to stay, I'm sure, for every year. Um, unfortunately, it didn't go our way this year to, to bring the cup and keep it here. But um, it's it's a tradition that I don't think this town or this team is ever going to forget. And it's going to be pushed every year um, to keep that cup here with us. Liam is a young boy. He's now six years old. 
uh, when he was four years old in 2017. I saw an article about him in the paper, how people were sending cards for him. He has uh, a rare syndrome disorder that uh, he he's, can't speak, he's non-verbal, uh, um, he's gonna have some developmental issues. Um, and we were gonna put a car together and send it to him. And then I saw that they live close by in a couple towns away. So I decided to invite him and his parents to one of our games. I remember he came to our Hillsboro game that year and we had just lost, I think three or four straight games. And he came and we won that game like 17 to two. And he became our little good luck charm. And we gave him a jersey. We gave him a, a, a Yoohoo box because in the article in the newspaper, it spoke about how the family celebrated that he was finally to drink out of a juice box, drinking the Yoohoo. And it was just like a lesson to us, like we can't sweat the small stuff. Here is an individual who's his family celebrating drinking from a Yoohoo box. And, you know, for us, we can't complain about the, the little things. I think he just became an, an inspiration to us. Uh, he's been coming to games for the past three years. So it's been great having him. How did you, uh, how did you find out about it? Well, I was just playing football and baseball, but baseball is a little slow for me. And uh, a lot of my friends had transitioned to lacrosse, so I uh, started picking it up when everybody else did. Um, my mom was a big, she played a lot when she was in high school and she played a little in college. So she kind of forced me to play and then she was my coach in fifth grade, which is why I came back. So I actually started playing lacrosse when uh, I was a freshman in high school. I wound up actually quitting baseball my eighth grade year and then transferring over to uh, lacrosse freshman year. So. The locker room was epic. There was always people dancing, music playing. Coaches got into it, and uh, in this past season, we had a little uh, basketball tournament going, so that was a lot of fun. I think all the teams are like really, really like, like tight knit. Like my, me and like my girls, we've been playing together since like fifth grade, so we're all like best friends. And I'm pretty sure it's like the same thing with the boys. Like you guys are like a family, and a lot of pasta parties. We're always like doing team bonding activities. It's a lot of fun. We're, we're basically a family. Yeah, lacrosse has been a. Uh, I had a huge impact on my life, you know, not only uh, with me being able to go and play in college, but there's uh, a lot of lessons that lacrosse has taught me, including uh, just diligence, you know, working hard, and also how to cope with losses, because uh, we've had some tough ones, not only in this past year, but in uh, the last four years for me, so. Yeah, I get, I get very frustrated with my lacrosse team, because like, you have to like, you literally rely on every single person on the field like and if someone isn't doing their job like it messes everything up so I think with lacrosse like it taught me how to like control like myself and like not just like out like have outbursts at people and like you know speak to people like calmly and like be a leader and really you know like you know pass on like my knowledge to other people like which will help them and yeah yeah, I mean, I definitely think that when I first started in playing in high school, just because it was so new to me and I didn't know if I would make the team or not, uh, just to kind of, if you want to do something, just do it. You know, you, no one's going to really get it done for you unless you actually try and give it your best shot. Um, so I think that was definitely the first thing and then just kind of seeing it transition through senior year and then actually being lucky enough to get recruited and then uh, become a three-year starter in college. Just kind of showed me that, you know, if I put my mind to it, I can actually do this and be successful with it. And it taught me a lot of time management, um, you know, how in being a captain in high school senior year and then college senior year, just taught me a lot of, you know, how to manage a lot of different personalities. Um, so I think that was, you know, time management, you know, being able to, to manage a different uh, group of people will teach me a lot in the, in the real world now that I'm out of college and you know, looking for jobs. So it'll definitely, I feel like, will separate me from other candidates for, for jobs moving forward as well. Clearly you've done a lot. I mean, I think that's probably the best question you uh, could ask. I, I love coming to my job every day, not just being a PE teacher, but being a coach. It's the relationships that I build with you guys. I mean, yeah, we'll always remember the wins. We try to forget the losses, but a winning is great, but it's the relationships that I build with the alumni. I know we spoke about it a couple of weeks ago. We had our final game, and there were kids there from our 2013, 2014 team, guys who are now 23, 24, 25. They have their own careers. And they're coming back to root on the guys that they have. They have. They didn't play with them at all, you know. But they're back to support the program. And to me, it's that's the best part of my job. Is you know, 
like I said, the worst day of the year is saying goodbye to the seniors, but I'm proud that they're alumni and just having that connection. And I really think we are a very tight knit program. And I think that's something the game's, you know, given back to me. Uh, playing in college was, you know, four of the best years of my, um, you know, life. Success, winning a college championship with a bunch of guys or our memories, and then playing at a really good high school where lacrosse was a culture. You know, we were a national powerhouse, and lacrosse was the main sport. And it was just awesome being a part of that. So I think three phases have all given me back something. I, I, I think lacrosse is a small community. And if you're a part of the lacrosse community, that leaves an impact on you for your whole life. I still talk to the guys I played with in high school, the guys I played with in college. I still talk to them. Uh, I don't see them as much as I would like. Um, the, the coach that coached, my older brothers is still coaching in Long Island at Garden City High School, and I still see him. So the legacy of family um, is very, very strong. When I see any of the graduated players, mostly boys, because you know, with the four boys, I've been mostly on the the boys' side. When I, when I see any of the graduated boys um, that are off doing whatever they're doing in either college or um, maybe graduated in a job, they always come up and say hello, and it's wonderful. It's like, a, you know, the community just keeps getting bigger. Um, and, and I think that's the legacy. You know, when, when, um, when you go for a job and you've got lacrosse on your resume, anyone that's played lacrosse is going to notice that. And, and, and it's going to be a connection that you instantly have with that person, even if they weren't from your program or on a team you ever played. So it's that family, that community feeling that's the legacy. So uh, I think the impact it leaves on its players are, in, in some ways, it's the same as all sports, uh, teamwork and camaraderie, uh, you hard work and dedication, things like that. Um, but I think with lacrosse specifically, at least in my experience, it, it's again, there's, a, there's a respect for the history of the game. And, and from what I've seen, at least from my experience in Scotch Plains, uh, people want to give back to the sport. People want to volunteer and get involved and help coach youth and, and keep the sport going and, and grow the sport and get other people to, 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 to get to know and love the sport. Lacrosse has given me more, the sport of lacrosse probably has given me more opportunities after college than anything, okay? Um, relationships that I've made in, in lacrosse playing and then after. Um, you know, listen, there's been job interviews that I went on that somebody has looked at me and says, you played lacrosse? Me too. And I got a look and a job because it's a small community. Everybody looks out for each other. Um, lacrosse is one of those sports that um, it's not a huge, huge sport yet, but the community itself is very tight. And um, I can't tell you how many times lacrosse has came up in big conversations. Um, as far as I've been on a lot of interviews in the, in the past that almost every single time somebody's asked me about my lacrosse background in an interview which is not a sport it wasn't the interview I was going for so lacrosse um, it brought me here okay um, I you know I think one of your questions were about the youth and some of the people that helped me get here um, in the beginning I think it was uh, Tim Gordon he was running the program at that time and he was the one that kind of reached out to me to get me here in Scotch Plains. Um, when Tim left, Mike Kleffer took over and our relationship stayed and, and grew. And I was able to build that relationship. All of these things um, are, are so helpful where I can reach out to either one of those guys if I needed something and they're gonna help me and vice versa. If they called me and said, I need your help with this, could you help me? And not only because of the relationships, but because of the kind of people they are. All right, so, um, it still helps me today. Two days ago, Elizabeth asked me about lacrosse. Okay, where, where, what it is, how it is, could they start it in Elizabeth? So you realize that there's a lot of different things that lacrosse will bring to you in your life. Um, I guarantee if you're sitting on the other side of a, of a table and the guy you're trying to hire is a lacrosse player, you're probably gonna look at him and go, I'm gonna give this guy a shot because I know what he's went through. I know what kind of team he's played on. I know that he's a good person because that's kind of what lacrosse tries to build. Um, and you're probably going to give that person a shot before somebody else just because of the struggle and the, and the, and, um, the fight that you had to go to the play and to get on the field. So um, lacrosse has been probably one of the most influential things for me. It got me into college. 
So I wouldn't have got into Sacred Art University without lacrosse. My grades weren't good enough. So lacrosse got me into the school that I needed to get to, okay? Got me jobs after school that I might have not gotten, but because of it. So it's brought a lot to me. Um, and I hope it brings to you and to the rest of the guys that are graduating it just as much success.